Hi, welcome everybody. Thank you for coming. My name is Maureen Cashin Bolog, and I own and operate Actors Craft in Kenosha, Wisconsin. And I also have a Facebook book. Uh, Facebook group called Actors in Wisconsin. So if you are in Wisconsin or a bordering state, this is a group that connects filmmakers and theater professionals with actors in our state and surrounding states. So it's a really good resource for building uh, reels and resumes. And you don't have to worry about what stage you are in as an actor. All levels are welcome. The whole purpose of the group is to give, give everyone experience. So you're welcome to join that. I've been in business since 2005. And in 2015, I bought a, a, a building from 1863. It was the a derelict building and I renovated it into my acting studio and it converts into a 50 seat theater. Um, the foundation of my classes at Actors Craft is the Chubbuck technique, which was developed by Ivana Chubbuck and has been used by Academy Award winning actors and Golden Globe winners. So um, when I started Actors Craft in 2005, I was looking for a book to use in my classes. And I went to Soliloquy Bookstore in Chicago and the woman who owned the bookstore, it was an actor's bookstore, she told me about uh, the power of the actor as and some other books. And what I loved about The Power of the Actor is that it's an easy read, but a passionate read. And I think you should all have this in your, in your acting library. Um, the Chubbuck technique is going to take anything you've learned about acting to the next level. And anything you learn about acting can be tucked underneath one of Ivana Chubbuck's 12 steps. So the Chubbuck Technique teaches you how to take the pain and the challenges from your life and not to spiral into despair, but to use these challenges from your life to propel your win, to triumph over adversity. And these are the skills of uh, powerful people in the world, and they're also the skills of powerful actors, we who are not afraid to overcome adversity to achieve our goals. Uh, there's three parts to Ivana Chubbuck's book. The first part is the 12 steps that we're going to be covering today. The second part contains some great information uh, for characters who have different states of being, like if you play somebody that's a, a, a drug addict or an alcoholic, or um, she'll give you formulas so that you can create, um, organically feel these primal states. You don't have to do drugs to play a drug addict, okay? But she'll give you some formulas on how to uh, portray those characters. Also, you know, if you became a cop or a, a therapist or something, she, she talks about, you know, what's the MO for people who choose these fields. And these are things that are going to infuse your character development, things that perhaps you had not thought about before. So it's a wonderful resource. If you have a, an audition coming up, you can and you can bring a more authentic uh, representation of your character uh, to the role. Um, and then part three then in her book is uh, where she um, she shows you how to apply the technique to a script. All right, it's the practical application of the 12 steps and how you should be writing them in pencil on your script. When you're working on a roll, you should have pencil all over this script with all of the things that you've discovered. All right, so she'll teach you about how to, uh, how she uses her uh, steps and how she applies them to the script. Now, initially, I'm going to go over those 12 steps. Obviously, I mean, I can talk about these steps for, you know, weeks and years, you know, because there's a lot of great information that you can infuse into each of these steps. But I also want to show you that these are very accessible. Um, I read a lot of books, a uh, lot of acting books, and a lot of them have really great ideas, you know, and they're full of great ideas. But sometimes when I read them, they were not organized in a comprehensive way. And what I love about the 12 steps is that it's just a very clear structure that organizes the tools you need to be a powerful actor. Tool number one is overall objective. 
what do I want from life more than anything? Tool number two, this is scene objective. What do I need back in this scene? Scene objective is relationship driven. Tool number three, obstacles. Your character needs to have problems, all right? You have problems that affect you your whole life. You have problems that are affecting you in this scene. You have obstacles that are affecting you moment to moment. Tool number four is substitution. With whom am I speaking? Now, oftentimes as actors, we're meeting this actor for the first time, but this character is now my, hus my husband or my, uh, my daughter. And how do we effectively create that layered experience with this actor in front of us that helps it seem like we have had years of relationship leading up to this moment, even if it's you know, a cold reading with another actor. Um, tool number five is inner objects. These are the pictures that we see in our mind when we're talking about a person, place, or thing. In real life, if I was, you know, I'm talking about my ma or I'm talking about my daughter, you're having, you have pictures in your mind of yourself being a daughter or your mom. And actors need to do the same thing with inner objects. Every time you talk about a person, place, or thing, there should be something behind it, a picture in your mind's eye. Tool number six is beats and actions, all right? Don't be a one note wonder. Don't play the same note over and over again in your scene. Find creative dynamic ways to go after what you want. Tool number seven is the moment before. We don't want to start at zero with action and work up to 60, right? We want to, with our moment before, it's gonna fuel us, it's gonna fill us emotionally, it's going to fill us physically, that when we start, we're going after that scene objective, you know, from a place of power and purpose. Tool number eight is place and fourth wall. So place is, a, you know, where am I? And what's my relationship to this place? And I should have a relationship with this place that I'm in. And what's, you know, what's my sensory experience with this place? You know, what am I seeing, smelling, tasting, hearing, touching? Um, and helping to create that for yourself and to create emotional connection with the space um, using places from our own life. And on that fourth wall, the fourth wall is where the camera is or where the audience is. And if we are creating intimacy in this scene here, we want to put something on that fourth wall so that it's just like the viewer is a fly on the wall and I can still be in this intimate moment with you know, my daughter, my husband, um, whoever my, you know, whatever scene I'm in. <clears throat> Tool number nine is doings. Give yourself something to do. Um, there's a lot of information in here, right? Because maybe you're not a doctor in real life, but it'll give you ideas about things that you can actually do if you are a doctor, if you're a lawyer, if you're a drug addict, if you're a mother, um, if you're pregnant. You know, what are things that we do that are tied in with the character? Tool number 10 is inner monologue. And this is what is going on inside of my head what's going on in my head when I am talking, what's going on in my head when you are speaking and I'm processing the information that you're giving me, I'm actively listening and processing that information, and what's going on, what's our inner monologue when there's no dialogue? An inner monologue can be very, very powerful even if you have no lines. All right, tool number um, 11 is previous circumstances. And this is giving our character a history. Your character should not appear to have, you know, come to life on page one of this script, right? You have this entire life. You were born and raised and that whole life experience of your character infused with your own life should be brought into the script with the previous circumstances to help you feel, fuel your win, to get your overall objective to get your scene objectives. And then tool number 12 is let it go. All right. Um, 
But before we let it go, you need to rehearse, right? You need to rehearse these tools. You need to find um, overall objectives that resonate. You know, you try two or three on for size, scene objectives, you try two or three on for size, and you can make deeper, richer, greater choices. So in the rehearsal process, you're going to be uncovering a lot of information that helps you understand your character better, that helps you understand your relationship with your scene partner better, with the other character there with you. And now you're ready to shoot. And this is where you let it go and you live in this moment. You live truthfully in this moment, moment to moment, and you let that other person impact you. You do hold on to your scene objective because that is what, um, that's that through line of action that gives you purpose in your scene. All right, so those are the 12 steps. Very simple to understand them. You just have to grow in your use of them, right? By making more specific choices, richer choices that help you create more dynamic characters. So now we'll go back and I'm gonna start with overall objective, all right? Overall objective is what does my character want from life more than anything? finding out what your character wants over the course of an entire script. Well, what's the first thing you have to do here? You have to read the script, all right? 